In part three of my multi-part video series with Jazz Record Center's Fred Cohen, Fred pulls out a couple of his most rare items. I've worked in the store off and on for 30 years and have never seen these. Supposedly, I say that guardedly, supposedly, Dial, record company most famous with Charlie Parker, issued the very first LP. Frank, I don't know whether it was Columbia or Dial, but let's say it was either the first or one of the very first LPs. That LP, was known as Dial DLP number one. Bird Blows the Blues. Wow. Bird Blows the Blues was not available in stores. You read about it through the magazines. Either in Metronome, there was an ad. That's just an enlargement of the ad. Oh. And then Downbeat. Had an ad. Now going back to 1949. Wow. Vinyl light. And then they even did a review. They gave it. They didn't have stars. They gave it three notes. Huh. And then even sent out a postcard here. This is a whirling disc. Whirling disc was um, on 7th Avenue between 49th and 50th Street. The reissue, there it is, Bird Blood was three, $3.94. Then Dial would send out a postcard for that record. And then it also appeared in Dial's very first record catalog, which is here. What year was and that's this? that's right here. This had been 1949. Oh, wow. That's now, even before it became Dial 901, it was made available, mail order only, no art cover, just a brown paper sleeve as DLP1. Wow. Then Dial issued it commercially as Dial 901. It, it was the, the beginnings of the of Dial Records when they did ha apparently had no commercial distribution or huh. artwork wow. and just decided to, to see whether it would fly. And their address was um, 884 10th Avenue. So is that, is that something you would sell? No. No. <laughs> but, to, but to complete the story on this, this is then the reissue the second, the first commercial issue of the album. I don't know whether you can see it. It's on dark red vinyl. In the frame, there we go. Okay. Wow! And then, the one that is most often seen is this one with the, with the traditional dial label. So these are the three permutations. In, in any condition, they're very, very obscure items. Uh, I was just fascinated with the story of DLP-1, huh. and over time accumulated these two other extras, and a good friend of mine sent me the postcard, and I got a catalog, so Crazy. I decided this you know, would be interesting for people to see. Thanks for showing me that. just say start off so that as an intro Norman Grands from Mercury, Norgran, Clef, Verve and Pablo I think is the most important record producer ever period. Hmm. He gave his audience its money worth always musically sound, good sound and superb musicians. Early on 
he had a contract with Ella Fitzgerald, and he had Ella do a box set of Ella Sings the Gershwin Songbook. The very first release of that was in this teakwood box. Can I even get it open? Oh, there it is. Teakwood. The, the piano hinge. Huh. Inside is his signature. You hold it up. There you go. Plus the, signature. the signatures of wow. Gershwin, Ella, both Gershwins, Ella and Nelson Riddle. People would want to know, well, how did they get George Gershwin's signatures? He was long dead when this came out. Grands, I guess, made an agreement with the, with the Gershwin family to get some canceled checks. Wow. Cut the signature off. Incredible. <laughs> Hardback book. Wow. A portfolio of Bernard Buffet prints, which were the covers of the later issues of this material. That was beautiful. And then finally, le five leather binders or sleeves. Insane. Five leather sleeves. One, which has an EP in it of uh, Ella, its narrative, and some songs, and then sleeves with each separate record. Have you seen that more than once? Once. How often, how many of those were made? Well, there's, let's see, on the signature page, 200, supposedly. Now, you honestly never know, right? other than mosaic. Anyway, you don't know whether there were 200 of these made. Probably so, but over time, you know, people probably threw the records out and used the box to put, to, to put thread in there. Cat litter. Um, yeah. What do you think that sold for originally? Probably not very much, maybe at most $100. And what year was that? 59. Um, there is no stereo on this. It's just, the stereo, it was released in stereo. Right. But the, this box is only mono. And so, is this the first instance of Ella recording all these American songbook tunes in one spot? Like she did Gershwin first? She did, uh, yeah, Gershwin, Cole, yeah. This okay. would have been, this preceded Cole Porter and, and, and all the and others. and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's amazing. Thank you for showing me yeah, that. Yeah, this is... That's insane. And, you know, Norman Granz, I have to say, he produced uh, box sets for, uh, the, is the famous Astaire set. Huh. Fred Astaire, color photos, David Stone Martin photo, I have one of those. Uh, I'm a big fan of Grands and I highly respect the work that he did.